Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Dr. Amit Sen Gupta from Janasastha Abhiyan discussing the draft 12th five year plan on health. Amit, recently it has come out that the draft, the 12th five year plan on health, seems to be a sharp departure from earlier health policies of the government. How do you characterize this major shift in the plan document? I think the uh, major issue that uh, one needs to be uh, very concerned about in this document is that for the first time in a public document, we are talking about what is called managed care. Managed care that is going to be financed by the public sector, by government finances, and is going to be provided for largely by the private sector. This is the international definition of managed care. This is what, for example, you have in the United uh, States. Now, while over the years we have seen the growth of the private sector in India, we have seen a decline in public finances, a decline in health infrastructure, uh, but nowhere before have we articulated it clearly that now the government is going to hand over uh, health care, clinical uh, care, over to the private sector, not just to the private sector, to the corporatized private sector. So that's the major departure and it's an ideological departure. It's, it's not just a technical issue that we are talking about. It's an ideological departure because it is in sync with what the government is doing in various other sectors. It's the first time that they're doing it in health and putting it down in black and white. But health is significantly different in one respect because effectively the person who seeks the health care does not really know what he or she should get. Effectively, he or she is completely in the hands of the system in which she goes and therefore they decide how much expenditure is really going to be incurred. Yeah, that's precisely why if you uh, look at uh, the market economy countries across the world, uh, even where they have uh, market principles working in various other sectors, the health sector is something that has always been kept out of. Uh, so, across Europe, for example, in Japan, uh, public uh, financing and some form of public uh, provisioning of health care is the norm. It is not uh, the aberration, it is the norm. United States is actually the only real ex exception in market economy countries where you have such a large private uh, provisioning and financing of health care. And by all accounts, the uh, health system in the United States is the worst performing among all developed economies in the world. It has, for example, uh, parameters which are worse off than Cuba, which spends something like one hundredth of what the Americans spend on health care. Per capita. Per, uh, per capita. So that's, that's really the kind of uh, mess you get into, uh, which the United States has got itself into, if you really uh, sort of use the managed care model, because precisely that uh, there is a logic of health system. There's a public logic of health systems, and there is a logic that the private sector uses in health care. The public logic of health systems is that you need to keep people healthy. Whereas the private logic is that the more people fall sick, the more money you make. So there is, you, there, it, it is impossible to combine the public and the private logic and believe that you will have a health system which has both private and public player. What you are saying, the logic of the market is against the logic of a healthy nation. Absolutely. The logic of the market really does not apply to health. No, it applies to more disease. <laughs> yes, it, it applies to actually uh, producing situations where you act, uh, you promote disease. I mean, you, you can actually see that happening. I mean, not just uh, uh, in the United States or elsewhere, but in India. Uh, that today, if you go to the private sector, there is a battery of investigations that you would be subjected to. You, I mean, it, it may seem an exaggeration, but it's not so that you can go with a simple pain in the abdomen which is radiating to your left arm, which is known to happen in lots of hyperacidity kind of cases, and you can come out of the hospital with a triple bypass. So there are umpteen examples of how today the private sector would like to have people be in hospital for longer times, 
spend more on medicines, spend more on investigations because that is how they are going to make money, uh, which is entirely <laughs> against the whole logic of public health systems. Last two decades particularly, we have not seen any expansion in terms of hospitals. We have not, in fact, whatever existed seems to be allowed to go into decline. In this context, do you think it is a way of creating the ground for this kind of a shift? Well, I would differ slightly with that. With the uh, National Rural Health Mission, uh, which was uh, one of the things that the UPA1 had launched and in fact, uh, the left had a major role in pushing for uh, some of these uh, schemes including the Narega, NRHM was one of another of these. Now, it is not as if that the NRHM has sort of vastly improve the situation as far as public health infrastructure is concerned. But what it has done is that it has brought back the public ethos in health systems in many parts of the country and there has been moderate expansion. Uh, it is true in infrastructure. And in fact, many would argue that uh, the uh, present plan document is the neoliberal lobby striking back. And in fact, uh, from what we understand from reports, even the health ministry is extremely unhappy with this. Uh, because uh, people in the NRHM, in the health ministry, who have started seeing some difference being made, uh, see this as also an attack on the public system that the NRHM constitutes and uh, attempt to reverse this so that the path to entirely privatized uh, privatize the health sector uh, is uh, made easier and this is this is not just in india we've we've had this uh, experience in many developing countries mexico mexico is a classic example of this the managed care model in mexico that was started in 2004 uh, very clear parallels that you starve the uh, public sector of funds uh, then you say that the public sector can't uh, deliver. At the same time, you say you agree that yes, catastrophic expenses are causing people to die, and then you say, but the public sector doesn't exist, so we need the private sector to do, provide care. So this is really the rollout of a very clear game plan. But you can see in the urban areas, for example, now the public sector is actually shrinking in terms of hospital uh, hospitals per capita if you look at it because expansions of, of Delhi has taken place uh, quite dramatically. But new public hospitals have not really come up and the gap is being filled by private hospitals. So there has been in the, at least in the urban areas a clear shift from public to private delivery in most states in the country. So do you think that in, this is also a, a way of supporting this for corporatized hospitals that are coming up? Yes, you see also I think we need to factor in one more thing that this is a floundering economy at the moment. The growth rates uh, the forecast is being uh, sort of uh, pegged down every day. Now for uh, a planning commission led by neoliberalizers uh, today, uh, they are, I do not think they are really interested in healthcare. They are looking at this money, this public money that can be pumped into a private sector to prime pump a floundering economy. Now, in neoliberal sense, probably it makes some uh, sense, uh, but it, has, it is absolutely against the logic of the public health system. Would you also say it is against the logic of the health system? Yes, because uh, I would argue that health systems have to be public. They have to be publicly financed and publicly provisioned. Anything else can be an interim arrangement. It's it's possible to, for example, argue that in situations where you do not have an infrastructure in the public system, you may need to utilize some forms of private entities. But that, for me, is an interim arrangement. It's a technicality. It's not the lo long-term vision of how you're going to build up the uh, public system. So, if you really talk about a health system, it has to be a public system. India has one of the most privatized health systems in the world. This is what you have written about. Now, do you think that this is in, in effect in order to shore up that kind of private health system which is already come in in various ways? And as you said, it is only to help the Ranbaxis, the Maxis and all this private health uh, corporate entities that have come up to really become uh, much bigger? Well, I would say that would be part of the game plan. It is also interesting that there was a 
year and a half lead up to this planning commission's document. There were various uh, committees and commissions and task forces that were set up by the government. And all along, there was this uh, promise at the uh, back that uh, there will be significant increase in public uh, health finances. Now, what the planning commission document says now is that it will increase to 1.58% from the present 1% of GDP. Now, that is an even smaller promise than what the 11 five-year plan had said, which was 2.5 percent. It is less than what UPA 1 in 2004 had said, which was 2.5 to 3 percent. So, the Planning Commission neither has it delivered in terms of what, how much of finances you are going to put into health care uh, against the promise that was held out. And even that meager increase that it is now promising and we will have to really see if that meager increase actually takes place is now going to be siphoned away from the public sector into the private sector and what is this private sector that we are talking about we talked about max uh, etc now what we are starting to see and it is in a way unique across the world except in the united states nowhere in europe you have this you don't have this kind of private sector in japan integrated chains of private sector which integrate insurance companies pharmaceutical companies and hospital chains this is the kind of monopolized integrated chains that are now uh, coming up in India and they are pushing out the, all the small players. I mean, in fact, in Delhi, the general physician has disappeared. It's been replaced by franchises of these hospital chains who are not interested in primary care. These franchises where they exist are foraging for patients that they can bring to their hospital systems so that they can charge money out of them. You can't even get small things today treated privately. You have to go into this kind of precisely. Hospital. So, so that's I mean, Delhi is uh, is really uh, sort of the worst off in that in that sense. I mean, other cities still have uh, a modicum of what used to exist earlier in terms of uh, GPs, etc. But that's that's the tra trajectory that you are uh, starting to see. So, essentially, what this plan document is doing is not matching its earlier commitment to increasing uh, financing. But whatever financing it is going to be provide is going to provide is tied is going to be tied increasingly to the private sector providing medical care and the public system is going to be limited increasingly to providing vaccination, health education, antenatal care, things that the private sector anyway is not interested in. So what you are saying is that a small increase in outlays but a much larger amount of money actually going in to serve a much smaller number of patients because the cost of care is going to increase Absolutely. manifold. Absolutely. So in effective terms, it means the health care reaching the people act is going to decrease as a consequence of such reform. Precisely. I mean, if the same money, uh, whatever amount they are going to put in, instead of putting it in the pockets of your Apollos and Maxes, had been used to expand the infrastructure in the public system. That's a national asset. That's a public asset that you would have had for all times to come. Instead of that, you're siphoning up that money and putting it in the pockets of the private sector. Thank you, Amit. I think this is something that we are seeing across the board, not only in the health sector, but the health sector is particularly vulnerable because people don't have control over their own health. Thank you very much. Thank you.